Welcome to the Secret Yarnery Crochet Vlog, Episode 11. Yes, we are in a new space. That's why I've been so, well, one of the reasons why I haven't been on YouTube. Missed you guys. Thank you for everybody who was leaving comments and asking where I was and checking in because I know I miss you guys. Like I really enjoy connecting with you and to know that you are also um, enjoying it also means the world to me. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps the vlog stay on the chart. So people, not the chart, what is it? Like searchable. So if you type in crochet vlog, if there's comments, likes, and I have a bunch of subscribers, it pops up. So that helps other people find us and connect, and that's helpful. So that's why people are always asking you, like, subscribe, and share. That's what it does. Thank you very much for doing that. Let's get started. Finished objects, of which I have a few. Or you want to know why I'm in this new space with the echo, echo, echo. I'll give you a tour around. Okay, let's start with that. Let's get the talking out of the way. So I did the craft fairs, the small one and then the big one. The big one was fabulous. Other than our tent was under about six inches of water, like on the ground. It was very discouraging. There was probably about 10 tents that had this water problem and ours was one of them which was not, I wasn't pleased about, because I, I paid the most money you can pay for a tent, like I got the biggest tent, because you, know, you need sofas, you need to hang out. Um, so it wasn't like I had a little dinky tent or I didn't pay as much money like I did underwater, so that was kind of like uh, uh, discouraging. But we, we made it do, we, had, we put in a floor, and it was really, it was good. But the best part of it, was seeing people's faces like there was outside of our tent so our tent was okay but outside our tent which is not my property and not my problem and they're supposed to fix which they kind of didn't um it's like it was like puddles like four or five inch puddles of water so people are walking they're like you know you're browsing you know as you go along and it's like squoosh and people are like oh and then they kind of go a little wider they kind of stay away a little bit I don't need like people that don't like yarn mauling my yarn. But you wouldn't believe the people who are like squish and then they look, they see the yarn and they like run. Like water's flying, mud is flying, and they're like charging at the yarn like they're so excited about it. Faces light up. It was like, it was amazing. So that was really good. That was totally worth it. And my crochet ladies, stellar job. You know who you are Deborah, Priyanka, Litsa, Lisa. Those are my rock stars. Uh, hung out pretty much the whole weekend. We had our little sofa set area. Like if we set up a little living room, so we hang out in the living room. There was like the food court and all that where we had, you know, beverages and snacks and a cheese company from up country. Delicious. So we sat around having beverages and eating food and talking to other yarnies. It was spectacular. Like it was so great. Um, there was a lot of effort. Like the effort was insane. Like setting up in the water was very discouraging and challenging, but totally worth it to hang out with like-minded yarnies. So really loved that. And then got over that. So many people interested in yarn, so many people wanting to take crochet classes, like so much interest, so much enthusiasm from like new people that were cool. Um, I knew we wouldn't fit in my little guest house. Like, it fits for us, like our original little group of like, there's probably like eight of us. So normally there's like six people that come and six people fit in that little room. But if there's new people, we would be like on top of each other. So I hatched a plan to kick my kids out of their toy room, of which I had locked the door about, well blocked, I didn't lock it, but I put a bookcase in front of it. Because they would just come into this room, which was full of toys. Shockingly, I mean, insane amount, but it's like away from the house, kind of like it's the front of the house. So they just kind of scoot in here, open up all the board games, throw all the pieces, laugh, open up another board game, you know, check it out, leave it open, pieces everywhere, puzzles, wooden puzzles, like oh, stepping on it, and throw in those little beads that you put on those pegs. 
yeah, I was, I was like, no. Like, I'll tell you three or four times, clean up your own mess. Then I'm like, guess what? No, like, no. So then I was like, I've already kicked him out of the room, technically. Put your yarn in there. So people come to the front of the house, move all the bookcases in, or the yarn shelves, which I've already cut most of their toy shelves in half to make yarn shelves. Thank you. So I'm like, it'll all fit. Like, we'll totally just fit in there, put the sofas. Everybody can just hang out. We have washrooms. Because this room, it was designed as a party room, I guess. So it's at the front of the house. It has its own porch. It has like a DJ balcony. Don't even start. Like, I have no idea. I haven't been up there. It's so high. There's no railing. So like crazy, like a sober DJ balcony. And his or her bathrooms, two sinks. Like it's set up for like parties. So I'm like, well, that, we could set that up for crochet, right? But the, it was a day after BizBaz. I wasn't really, uh, well, obviously exhausted, but started moving stuff around. So that took like the whole week. And then there's obviously the echo because it's a two-story room. I'm working on that. I think I, maybe if I get a mic, you know, like that mic that plugs in and you put it on your shirt or something? I don't know. I got to still work on that. So I apologize for the echo. But so worth it for the space. So anyway, now we're in here. We totally fit, like it's so comfortable. Like it feels like we should have always been here. But then, you know, anyway, it's, it's pretty great. Anyway, that's my blurb, that's where I've been, that's what I've been doing. Couldn't do tutorials either because moving so much furniture around, I literally, I woke up one morning and I had like a black knuckle. Like it was puffy and like, wasn't black, brown. Like bruised, greeny, br like bruised. Don't even know what I did, but nails beaten up, hands beaten up, like it was a, it was a rough go. And moving stuff around, because you think it's gonna fit there and you're like, no, let's put it on the other side. Anyway, love it, few more things to do, but definitely presentable, we definitely fit here. Um, and the yarn is there, so when you're doing crochet, you can also, like you're just kind of looking at it, being like, oh, I really wanna use that. Which brings me to whips, but let me start with finished objects. So, one of you lovely ladies suggested doing Ruan Poncho, which is this beauty. So I made one. Now I obviously use a textured yarn, so I didn't, use, I didn't make a tutorial because I know it'd be hard to see your stitches. I'm going to make another one out of the bamboo. So 100% bamboo. I've started a little bit up there, but I'm going to change the size of it. I'm going to do it with one of those ones on the end, either the cream, if you could see it, or the, like the light brown kind of color. I think I'm gonna do the light brown. So that's my next one that I'll do. Let's see if you can see from behind. I don't know if you can see it behind the sofa, but it's pretty great. And it's really, it's a wool blend. And it's only double crochet. So that is just double crochet the whole way. And the wool goes from thick to thin. So it's pretty great, I hope you can see. So that's finished, love it, wear it all the time. Cause it's not hot, but it, you know, but it's like, it keeps you covered. And it, it just catches on my cupboard door handles in the kitchen. That's the only downside to it don't have to wear it when you're cooking, right? So that is my poncho. Love it, and yes, I'm doing a tutorial. Then my other student, my fabulous one, she makes those uh, stripey V ponchos. Um, Cause she's too lazy to like actually keep a wrap on her. <laughs> she doesn't like that. She's like, I like the V one cause it just sits and I wear it and it's done. So she started making one out of this gorgeous gray. She took it all good for her but uh, I had envy so I started one with this nice wool blend so it's self striping or at least color changing slightly uh, from those nice colors so it's a double a row of double crochet chain one skip a space double crochet chain one skip a space and then the next row is single crochet chain one skip a space blah 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 just alternate your rows and you come up with this great amazing texture. So this is a wool blend. It's 54% wool and the rest is acrylic and polyamide. I don't know what polyamide is. If you do, feel free to explain it. I have no idea. But that yarn is really great. It goes from 
thick to thin. Well, it's like knobbly, so it gives a really good texture. I like that one. Uh, and what I should be doing, or what I'm telling myself I should be doing, is Christmas stockings for an advent calendar. Now, Christmas stockings, also finished object. I did these last year. These guys, super cute. I want to do a tutorial on that, but I seem to have missed the season again. I want to get it up in November, but anyway. So I made those last year, I made six. I think I did it like, like four days before Christmas or something. I just decided I needed new stockings. Of which my Christmas decorations are vast. Anyway, Christmas stockings. Um, I have a Christmas decorating, well not Christmas decorating. I don't decorate like a weirdo. Like there's no stuff on my lawn. I don't have lights on my house. Like it's just, but I want my color options and I want things to be homemade. Not like Christmas balls. Christmas balls, yes, you need the shiny store-bought things, but the bits and pieces in around, it should be homemade. You know, anyway. I've had that issue since I was a kid, apparently. So, um, every year since I was about 18 or 19, I made Christmas stockings every year. Oh, excuse me. My father-in-law's in the hospital today, so I have to leave my phone on. One minute. <gasps> Okay, everybody has officially called me now. I don't actually know anybody else in Kenya that could call me, so I think we're good to go. Don't know where I was. Something about Christmas. Let me just, sorry if it's overlapping a bit. Anyway, I'm a Christmas freak. I don't decorate like a freak, but I need homemade supplies that are classy and color coordinated for any event or any Christmas color scheme that you have. And I don't really duplicate them. Other than green and blue, I do that. I do that probably like every five years or something because that's a really nice set. Like, I, I don't know how much time I had on my hands, but the tree skirt is like 20 pounds satin, like totally, it's gorgeous. Like all the trims, it like it's crazy. Obviously before I had kids. I think it was my last Christmas. I think I was pregnant that, that uh, Christmas. So I went, I went to town. Anyway, the whole set is gorgeous. I use that every few years. I'm hoping people have forgotten I already used it. But anyway, everything else is separated into colors. So a box of this, a box of that, a box of orange, a box of blue, a box of green, a box of red, a box of silver, two boxes of silver, a box of gold, big box of gold. Um, so you can just kind of pick them from the shelf and mix and match whatever you want to do for Christmas. So this year my son picked blue and gold, like navy blue and gold and I was like that would look really nice it'll match our living room furniture and that's where our tree is it'll look really nice we already put white pine cone lights on the tree so like you know I'm like good choice because you know one year they wanted orange and turquoise which apparently is the Tampa Bay Gators or something like that one of my friends said I was all devastated I think it's Tampa Bay or else it's Tennessee I don't know anyway it's a college football team devastated. anyway that's what I was hoping not for. So I was happy with the navy blue and gold. Go through the, yeah, you start dragging out the Christmas stuff, looking for the blue box, looking for the Christmas stocking box, because those are separate. I used to have them all by, like, in the right color boxes, but then I think it's easier to have a weird shaped long box and all the stockings inside. I've done that for a few years. Anyway, went and got all these stockings. So this is Christmas OCD. This is what it looks like. I don't even know what year I made them, like probably three or four years ago, but um, lace brocade, they're all like satin lined all the way down so you don't have any awful seams on your hand when you're picking out your good bits. I made 12, there's only 11, so there's one missing somewhere. Or maybe I, I don't know, because I, I have a numbers thing also. It has to be like good numbers. Anyway, all those pretty little ones. And then you just pick your stocking for that year. I think that's mine this year because I really like that silver trim. Anyway, not crochet, sorry, I already had those done. In case I didn't show you my crochet ones, these are my crochet ones, I did these last year. Uh, if I did show you, I'll just edit it out and skip it. And unpacking my Christmas stuff, found this beauty. So that, <coughs> excuse me, 
I think I got this in a secondhand store in Canada, like when, in my 20s. So, like 25 years ago. <laughs> um, anyway, it was like so pretty. I was using it to wrap up one of my nativity sets. <laughs> like bubble wrap, it's bubble wrap. So now I have it out in the crochet studio just for the season, it's cute. So what I feel like I should be doing, I wanna make like, I'm an advent calendar girl also, so I need like an advent calendar and usually I have one for each of my kids. I wasn't planning on having four kids. Um, I was planning on having three kids. So I have a fantastic, gorgeous three sets of fantastic, gorgeous uh, advent calendar, which is like the big match boxes and then all the matches tipped out and then lined with a really pretty paper and edged in a really pretty paper with a with a color coded number on it for the day of the the day of December and which kit it is gorgeous really gorgeous. I used like antique papers for it it's like so pretty but now I have four kids so like that's not working out so I used to have my one Christmas tree just for that and then every day they'd find their own box and there'd be like a treat inside or whatever Last year I just did paper bags on a string because overwhelmed, might have to do it again this year, no idea. But what in my head what I want to do is those little mini stockings on a board, blah, blah, blah. So there's only, like make them bigger so four treats can fit inside one stocking. And then have them on a board, like or with teacup hooks. So you can like put them on or take one off for every day so you can see how many more days left. You just count how many stockings. That's what I should be doing. But I picked colors, I don't know. I'm not feeling it in the least, like there's none of me that is feeling it. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm taking, I'm vlogging, I'm gonna vlog. And today I have a lunch with my girlfriend and, which is always fun. And tomorrow I have like the celebration of learning at my kid's school. So that's like going and seeing their work and blah, blah, blah. It's a cool afternoon thing. And then my kids are pretty much home for Christmas holidays. So, and it's already December 5 today. So I'm five days behind on my advent calendar. I might do the 12 days of Christmas this year. What I wanna do in my head what I think I might even end up doing instead of like the little stockings, which maybe I'll do for next year, is you crochet like a big square or whatever size you need to have. And then you make like swatches of whatever yarn and whatever stitch you want to do, of whatever size you want to do. And then you kind of stitch those on like pockets on your other crochet thing. I think I'm going to back it all onto fabric, like sew it on the machine, like just like literally but crochet everything and then stick it onto a fabric backing with like a dowel rod at the top or something like that. So you can just like hang it up and then there's like literally pockets of different sizes. So like the day before Christmas, you have a, like maybe the biggest pocket and blah, 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 so that you can put in like three big normal chocolate bars or four normal chocolate, like, you know, different sizes for different uh, things that you would generally always put in your advent calendar. I think I might just do that because the stocking thing, I'm not, I'm not feeling it, but I think it might also be my yarn choices, like my selection of colors, because I'm not really feeling and like, I have a hard time with acrylic. Now that I'm so spoiled, I have a hard time with acrylic. And I have a yarn shipment coming, acquisition time, yeah. Um, 60 kilos. <laughs> 60 kilos. So I have like, I, I counted them out, like how many balls of yarn I have. I think it's like almost, it's like 530, 100 gram balls and 350 gram balls and 32 cakes, yarn cakes, cotton yarn cakes. Almost all of it is self-striping of some sort. All the cakes are, plus all of, most of the balls um, are, and the gorgeous colors, like, I'm so excited. Bunch of crochet hooks for my students and probably me. Uh, crochet hooks. Okay, so my five-year-old and my four-year-old decide that standing on my bed, opening my bedroom window, and throwing crochet hooks onto my roof is the best, most hilarious game you can do. Oh, speechless. Speechless. Yes, I have zip-tied the window shut. They no longer open. You cannot open my bedroom windows anywhere near any furniture because that is ridiculous. 
my houseman came and he was like, oh, mom, like, look what's on the roof. I think you, you know, I think Oliver put your hooks out. And I was like, oh, he did. Like my light up crochet hooks, they, you know, the battery ones that light up at night. Yeah, on the roof, sprinkling with yarn clippings. So like, you know, I have a jar for my yarn clip clippings. Thinking in my head one day, I'm going to make one of those yarn bowls out of the scraps. Um, yeah. So yarn bits, I don't care about that. And my hooks, devastated. So crazy. Anyway, yarn coming with hooks coming from Turkey. And that should be here this week. I'm thinking Thursday or Saturday. But it, it, that should be here this week. And also a bunch of stuff from Amazon also should be coming either this Thursday or the next Thursday. Uh, I ordered a whole other crochet hook set kit thing, all clovers from regular up to 12 millimeter, and a bunch of cases, a bunch of uh, kits for stitch markers. I got a couple books. I got a flower book, crochet flower trims a book, uh, some yarn pendants, you know those yarn cutters, the clover yarn cutters for my students because I love mine. And some needles, the Susan Bait ones with the hole at the center. Hmm. I think that's all the yarny stuff that's coming. Hard to remember. Anyway, so excited about that. So acquisitions will be coming up in a vlog very soon. So enough of me talking. I'm sure I forgot a bunch of stuff, but that's what the next vlog is for. Let me give you a little tour around our space. So this is our yarnery. That is the DJ loft. Yes, with no railing and no ladder. Um, but Scarilla now lives up there in her crazy outfit. <laughs> well, I'll show you that noise. I'm sure that's of great interest. This is our veranda, by the way. So we have our Bizbaz sofa set out here. And we made a little gate on the side of the road. Or we had a little gate on the side of the road made to keep dogs out. And... That's my driver, Mike, waiting. Uh, that's that house under construction. It's very noisy. There's actually two houses. But that, uh, the one first, yes, that is how you put, um, you hold up wet concrete with, with logs or trees. I'm not even joking, it's so crazy. Anyway, uh, that's the noise, so I apologize about that. But I even waited to do it on like a Sunday, and they were working on a Sunday. So this is that poncho. Well, that's my, my dress and my poncho on top of it. And um, my yarns. So the bottom two shelves here are acrylic. Those are all local acrylic. So they're um, about like two bucks a ball, I guess. Six for a thousand if you're a member of the Crochet Guild of Kenya. And next row, this one here up until the white on that side is all chenille, worsted weight chenille. This shelf here is cotton up until the white. This shelf here up until the wood, just this first shelf, is 100% cotton, I mean 100% bamboo. And this, both of those shelves there are thin chenille. Those are cheap as chips and it works up really nice. This is what I want to make the poncho out of for the tutorial. Oh, so dreamy, like so dreamy. Love that. This is cotton bamboo. I'm getting more of it in my shipment that's coming. It's about one of the only ones that isn't self-striping, so yeah, that works up beautifully. I made a tunic out of it, which I'll show you one day, but really nice. Uh, this is all the cottons. Cotton, cotton, cotton. Metallics. So these are all miscellaneous uh, metallics for festive seasons. This is the wool twister. That's what I made my Ruana poncho out of. Fabulous. That's my marble stack tote. I fell down, apparently. Get it up there, okay. My elf hat. And this is the wool that I made my dog rug out of. Odette wool. Also cheap as chips. This is what I made my, or I'm making my stripey, what is it, stripey V poncho out of, but I'm not changing my yarn, I'm just using that. Miscellaneous textured, soft textured ones. They're really soft. I don't know what to do with it. I have, um, 
I gotta come up with something about that. And then I lit I lit ones down with my hand. There it is. I lit ones and some metallic valley. And then that's the acrylic again. And we have a shelf of finished objects and books and whips. <laughs> I gotta tone that one down, but I just won't show you. And those are finished objects. Um, my cactus with Christmas lights on it now, my fairy lights. And this is the his and her bathrooms. So bathroom, bathroom, sink, sink, and me. And the other shelf here of miscellaneous smaller amounts of yarn. These are like alpaca, alpaca blends, alpaca blends, alpaca blends, eyelash. Love that stuff. It works up so beautifully, like it's incredible, self-striping or color changing, whatever you call it, but beautiful. Um, chenille, chenille, weird metallics, sparkles and self-striping, weird stuff. This one, I don't even know how to use it. It has like a loop on one side. I think you're supposed to crochet with another yarn and then bring that in. I don't even know. Uh, fuzzy wool cakes, scarf yarn, I've never used scarf yarn. It's kind of like t-shirt yarn, but like net-like. Um, mohair and wool blend, more eyelash, more wool blend. Love that stuff. I made a fabulous shawl out of it. Um, what's remaining of our, our rainbow or unforgettable and some alpaca self-striping. So purdy. And then, so t-shirt yarn, cottons, cotton tape, cotton cord, and thick cotton. That's getting depleted fast. More cotton here, already gone. And super saver. That's my bag. Love it. I want to make a narrower one. Still on my list of things to do. Our mandala stools. Oh, t-shirt yarn rug. Tissue box cover. Oh, these are my noisy birds. A cockatiel and a budgie. They're quite sweet. They, they, the budgie will scream if they don't have millet. Like any bird food's fine, but if he doesn't have millet, he will like freak out on you. The little blue one, he's the boss. And then this is Uchi, that's my African gray. He is a few months older than my son, so he, thankfully, always get a parrot with a child. It's so much easier to calculate. He is four years old. We had him when he was a baby. A baby. Right, Uchi? Hello, Uchi. Hello, Uchi. I know, I can't right now, sweetie. He likes to cuddle. He's very sweet. I know, right? Um, and my stockings, they kind of hang out here on my cabinet because they don't have a fireplace in this room. And then that is a bookcase and a diaper changing table from when my son was born that obviously we don't need. So it's now a kitchen cabinet. Oh, that turned out so cute. And then my kitchen island from two houses ago. But uh, it needs the legs put back on. My moving company, they were such boobs that I just... Ugh, I just wanted them to leave, so they didn't put the legs on. I have to get my guys to put the legs back on. So it's the right height. But so we make our tea, we have all of our snacks here. And then we sit and talk and giggle and laugh hysterically while we crochet. And, and that's the mat I made for my dog out of that wool. And then we have our little outside area. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour of our new and improved yarnery. Please leave a comment in the comments below of what you're working on, what whips you are doing, and what you're doing for Christmas this year, if anything, or whatever holiday season you are celebrating. And thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and stay hooked. How is it working? Okay. Welcome to the crochet vlog. <laughs>